Good evening and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a very, uh, very important and interesting program for you tonight. And I'd like to start the evening uh, by mentioning two very important things. How lovely for you, was it was for you to be here, to have a great crowd here tonight on a beautiful summer evening in, in Ottawa. And uh, I think I'd also like to start by acknowledging uh, a horrific two incidents in, in Norway that has weighed on all of our minds of late. And just to acknowledge the loss of these innocent young lives in, a, in the most horrible of ways. And of course, it is a concern to, to all of us here. Having said that, let me welcome the panelists and all of you here. Uh, my name is Kate White, and I'm actually the Executive Director of the United Nations Association in Canada. And I'm really, my job really is to tell you a little bit about who we are before we can dive into the wisdom of our panelists. The United Nations Association in Canada is a 65-year-old organization, uh, part of civil society. Our mandate is to educate and engage Canadians on the UN and international issues of concern to us all. We do this in a number of ways. We certainly see our mandate as growing global citizens. Uh, we have things that you might expect. The largest biannual model UN in the world, where young people use empathy-based education to learn about others and skills of negotiation and so on. We send the best and brightest of young Canadians to UN agencies around the world in the most prestigious and I would say successful program of its kind in the world. We are also most pleased to host a series of catalytic projects that work on issues of concern to all Canadians where we think that we can make meaningful change. One of these projects is called Multimedia and Multiculturalism. The initiative is supported by the Government of Canada through Citizenship and Immigration, and in fact we have a, a colleague with us here today, and thank you for coming, Paul. This is very important, very important in light of my opening comments about, um, you will know that uh, this unlikely manifesto mentioned multiculturalism in Canada in a critical way. Importantly, I think the difference in Canadian multiculturalism is our willingness to try and acknowledge failure. You know, it gets better all the time, and it's our responsibility to make it better. And I think the other point that's so important and why we're here today is investing in multiculturalism. It doesn't happen by itself. We don't bring new people to the country. I have stories in, in my own family about uh, landing in Kingston, Ontario, of all things, and my mother passing a sign that said, job inside, no Irish. Now, you know, things evolve, but we have to work to make them better, and that, in a way, is why we are here today to do that. We work across the country. The project is in seven communities across the country where we engage broadly with these communities, and the idea here is to bring ethno-cultural minority youth into what we would call the the new mainstream media. And I think we've got some interesting comments on our panelists about how we do this and how successful or not we are in this. But I will tell you here today that we are very proud of the 21 interns that we have in Canadian media across the country right now who are doing some pretty exciting things and making a difference in their own communities. I'm also happy to tell you that um, not only does UNA Canada work in 20 branches across the country, we have 20,000 members and donors across the country, but we're only as successful as all of those people who work with us, and that means you. So I hope before you leave, you will pick up a membership form on the way out the door and thinking about joining us and how you too can take part in these activities of making us better and building us stronger because I think that's the obligation of every citizen. One of the other things that makes me very proud of this project is the team that hosts it for UNA Canada. You'll see running around with a camera somehow and somewhere here is uh, Simi Dixit, 
And Simi, I'd like to uh, I'd like to acknowledge you. I don't see you at the moment, but I know you're nearby. And Sarah Cambides of our office, Director of uh, Education and Outreach, who's here as well. How the project works across the country, however, is that we have an Indigenous, homegrown resource or regional coordinator, and I am very proud to introduce to you right now, I will vacate this place to her, is uh, Shelby Marie Dagle. Shelby has been doing a wonderful job reaching out broadly into the community and I think that you'll hear from her and her colleagues, many of you may already know her, that she has been making a difference in the lives of young Ottawans, young women, uh, young ethno-cultural minority youth who are seeing their way forward in many ways because of her efforts every single day. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I turn you over to her good hands and thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. I'm blushing a bit. Um, so yes, we're here today, and uh, how many of you had trouble finding the location? Hands up, man, hands up. Okay, that's great. Um, one of the reasons why I chose Club Saw was because I realized that in many ways, um, Ottawa, is, is, Ottawa, there exists many silos. There's sort of like an artsy silo, there's like a media silo, like a government silo, and then there's those of us who work in like settlement work or like social work and there's silos there and one of the things I think is really important um, for the success of this project but also for the success really of many of the youth initiatives here in the city is that we start bridging those those silos. We start actually trying to build bridges across. So this um, Club Saw itself is actually really a haven of the art scene. There's um, both, you know, we have Saw Gallery and Saw Video, but there's a lot of independent uh, video production and film production that happens in this space. Um, as well as spoken word shows and, and other forms of uh, multimedia um, initiatives. And so I think it's great for people who's the first time here. You might want to learn a bit more about it. Um, they even have actually saw video, I'm not sure about next year, but they regularly actually have special initiatives to um, encourage people from ethnocultural communities to produce their own documentaries. And they get grants to do that. So unfortunately, often um, those networks um, are not connected. And this is really what this question is about, is connecting those networks and building those networks. So I'd like to introduce our panel, um, and I'll introduce themselves, but uh, first um, is Vesa Lee um, with CTV, um, Ian Kaiku, who is the 2010 World Champion of Spoken Word, but is also a freelance journalist, um, Dr. Alia Dakuri, who um, teaches um, at the University of Ottawa in Communications, and Ranjit Bassi, who is the host of Trailblazers on Rogers Community Television. So each of them were given a series of questions. And I'm really looking forward to hear what their answers are um, uh, related to the theme of today, which is represent. So the question is really, um, you know, how is Ottawa media, both mainstream media and also community-based media, um, representing um, diverse ethnocultural communities um, in the city? And is it um, adequate and is it accurate? Um, some communities, what you could say, are underrepresented. Some communities, you could say, are overrepresented. But the question often is, um, how are they represented? And um, yeah, so I'm just wondering, um, I'd like to start with the first question, which was, um, you know, you could say a little bit about yourself you want to share with the audience, and what was your journey to getting involved with the, uh, the various ways that you are involved? Who would like to start? Okay, Vanessa, please start. It's very interesting, because all these people I chose because I need to work track. It's, it's odd to be on the other end of the microphone, I will admit. Um, so again, my name is Vanessa Lee. I'm a reporter for CTV Ottawa. I've been uh, a reporter for CTV for the last three years. Um, just, I guess, uh, we'll go on how, uh, we'll go back to, I guess, how I got started. Um, I've wanted to be a journalist since I was 12 years old. It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do um, because I'm a storyteller. Um, I like sharing stories um, of all topics uh, with people, and uh, I like to be the first to do that. So, um, uh, television has always has always been a passion of mine. So, I grew up in I was born in Quebec, but I grew up in Saskatoon, and I decided to study journalism at Carleton, and so I did that. And and afterwards, I started out in radio and crossed over into television. 
and uh, I've since worked um, as a television reporter in Saskatoon, uh, in Calgary, and Montreal, and Sherbrooke, Quebec. And uh, I came back to Ottawa because uh, this is an amazing city. And uh, that's me in a nutshell. Hello, my name is uh, Ian Kedeku, also known as MCE, uh, and how I got involved in media, when I was uh, a little boy, uh, we would go out on these field trips, or uh, we were allotted 30 minutes every day for cartoons uh, after school. And uh, after we watched the cartoons, it was a big uh, hoax from our parents because we would have to write a report about what we saw on uh, the television or what we did that weekend. So every day uh, got into sort of chronicling what, uh, what my senses uh, had been experiencing, if it was either through television or through uh, a field trip that we took. Um, this was in uh, Calgary, Alberta. Then I moved to uh, Edmonton to do my undergrad, uh, whereby I joined the student newspaper, The Gateway, and uh, was writing, you know, sort of opinion articles about uh, race relations, uh, everything from uh, taxi cab drivers who were doctors to uh, to state of uh, baggy jeans on uh, on youth, and then uh, from that uh, decided, uh, not decided, uh, sort of. Uh, found my way to Ottawa where uh, I did uh, journalism at Carleton and uh, from there uh, flirted with a bunch of different mediums uh, everything from print to documentary uh, and, uh, and so now I write a bit and uh, I'm also a poet uh, and so you know sort of the same thing telling stories like that uh, Vanessa said uh, that's me. Okay so um, uh, Thank you very much, Amy uh, Well, my, uh, in a nutshell, I am a, a media monster because I am consuming media in a different capacity. Uh, as a consumer, I'm consuming media while I'm driving, where I'm listening to radio and uh, watching TV and, uh, and so on. But also, I am a researcher in media. I, uh, I'm a Carltonian also in a sense. I got my um, master and PhD from Carlton School of Journalism and Communication, a BA from Media Studies as well from Cairo University. Uh, but as a researcher, uh, my research is uh, very much focused on the use of media and more generally communication as one of the basic human rights that people cannot live, human beings cannot live without communicating with each other and uh, themselves. So uh, how the right to communicate is very much emphasized and enforced within a community and um, um, nationwide, meaning giving um, voice to the voiceless and representing as the uh, cultural minority with fairness and balance and so on. And also I am a media um, consumer in a sense that I'm teaching uh, media studies. As an academic, I teach um, boring series, dry series of media studies, but I'm trying to uh, bridge um, those boring, dry series to real life examples by teaching future journalists and uh, media professionals um, series about balance and equity and uh, fairness and responsibility and this wonderful utopian ideals that I'm hoping that they would emphasize and practice in the real life. Thank you. How close does this have to be? That's good? Yeah. Okay. Well, my path into media has been not as direct, perhaps. Um, I'm actually an entrepreneur at heart. Um, actually, a person who wanted to go into social justice and law, humanitarian law, <clears throat> when I was in a university. Uh, quit university to actually open up my own business. So if many of you in Ottawa would know me as the body shop lady, I had um, four locations of the body shop in town for 21 years, 87 to uh, 2008. So for me, my interest was actually the intersection of business and social justice. Um, the idea of how can um, business, which really has more power and more money than governments do in any other sector, how can it actually equalize um, um, systems and, and equalize people in our community? 
So that's how I started um, with that. And so I started on this side, I guess, being questioned because we were always campaigning about social justice issues. Whether and so I was always trying to formulate events and trying to figure out how I could get the media's attention about um, child poverty, about the homeless, about pesticide use in Ottawa, um, about um, domestic violence. So it started off by that and being interviewed, um, and then. Um, I'm supposed to make this brief, right? Okay. So, uh, anyways, and then in I, in the fall of 2009, I helped a not-for-profit actually um, organize a two-day summit, the Three Eyes Summit, and the whole goal was really based on TED Talks. If any of you know that, how do we bring actually diverse um, communities of people in place together to actually have a dialogue across the sectors um, and across the silos, socioeconomic silos, ethnocultural silos, etc. And how do we come in one place and have one discussion about what we envision for our community, which is Ottawa? And so it turned into a fabulous event. And then I somehow got Rogers to actually film the full event. Um, they only wanted to film a bit of it. They loved the content. They turned it into eight episodes um, in Ottawa, well watched, well received, and watched by a wide audience. And from there, it got my head turning around, well, why isn't our community television doing this more? Why aren't we talking about our unsung heroes, uh, folks who are underrepresented in our community and our leaders in their own right, um, in everyone's um, you know, sort of circle of influence? Um, and so then I wrote a proposal, pitched them an idea, and they said yes. So here I am, and now I'm a host on our local television. Um, and loving it, because really, my at my heart, what I want to do is invigorate um, community dialogue, um, and dialogue that is one dialogue instead of many dialogues.